What is going on guys? Today I'll be talking about Fortnite's newest patch 7.20 and in this patch the biggest things that came out there were obviously the Sculpt Revolver and Glider and there was also some smaller um, kind of minimal weapon and item changes and I'll be talking about all of the big stuff. But before I get into the video, uh, if you haven't checked out my channel before, I talk about video gaming, uh, Fortnite, Red Dead, kind of all the new games, upcoming games, let's play, tips and tricks, and guide videos. So definitely subscribe for that type of content. But other than that, getting right into it. So um, obviously if you checked out Fortnite at all, you know they have the scoped revolver. So this scoped revolver is available in epic and legendary variants. It fires medium ammo. It has 42 to 44 damage per shot, and it's available from floor loot, chest supply, drops, vending machines, etc. And I actually did use this scoped revolver a little bit in gameplay, and it's actually not that bad. It didn't seem like a weapon I'd be using a whole lot of the time. It almost seemed like kind of like a mix between like the semi-automatic sniper and I don't even know, maybe like a bolt action sniper, but uh, it definitely shoots quicker. I think it will maybe add kind of more like of a quick scoping aspect to the game, but it really does not do a whole lot of damage and it doesn't seem like it shoots very quickly. So that might be a problem for it as well. But the next item that they add into the game is the glider. And this basically just allows you to do the redeploy whenever you want if you have this item in your inventory. So yes, this takes up an inventory slot and it can be found from normal loot sources. Um, gliders do not need to be selected to be deployed. So you can have your gun out or have your pickaxe out. It doesn't matter. But if you just jump and activate it in midair, it will deploy. Uh, the rarity is rare. They come with 10 charges and and each deploy uses a charge. While well, all charges are used, the item dis disappears. Glider redeploy does not consume a charge when using a launch pad, rip to go, or respawning in limited time mode, etc. And they could obviously be found from all of the normal sources: uh, floor loot, chests, vending machines, supply llamas. And one also, um, one other kind of important thing to note about these is you can't actually like split them between people. So you can't just give like one each person on your team if you want to run away from the storm or something like that. They don't split. Uh, the next big update was actually the minigun adjustments. So they added an overheating mechanism, which thank god they did because it is just very, very annoying when people just simply spray with the minigun and it overheats uh, about, it says, six seconds of continuous fire. So after six seconds, it's going to overheat, which I'm kind of happy about because I, f I hate miniguns. They are very, very annoying. They can be somewhat useful, I guess, towards endgame, but it is it's kind of annoying when someone just sprays you with a minigun with a thousand ammo, and it's just nonstop. Um, they reduced the wind-up time by 37%, so that almost kind of compensates for the overheating to an extent. And they just simply updated the audio for minigun, which the audio for it was quite annoying. I kind of want to see how that sounds. Um, the next thing they did that was kind of big was change rarity color adjustments. Uh, they changed balloons from epic to rare, stink bombs from epic to rare, scoped AR from rare to epic, and then also from uncommon to rare. So that changes the scoped AR from it, it used to be a purple and blue to blue and green. And I think I'm okay with that. I wasn't really a big deal on that. And they did a bit of a sniper update, which is kind of interesting. Uh, the following projectile-based weapons now have the same projectile trajectory as the heavy sniper. So the bolt action, suppressed sniper, semi-auto sniper, and hunting rifle all have the same bullet trajectory. So basically what that means is the heavy sniper actually had a little bit of a drop on it. And I kind of like that. I think it adds, it makes it a little bit more realistic and harder to just line up shots from like 200 meters away. So they added that to all the other snipers. So when you're aiming at someone and they're far away, you kind of have to adjust it a little bit. They also changed weapon first shot accuracy. Now works with icy feet and wild and zip lines. So you can be a little bit more accurate while you're sliding across the map or sliding down a zip line. The uh, reticle center dot on scoped rifles has reduced in side size. So I think people were having a problem when they were very, very far away. They were dead on or it looked like they're dead on. They're still missing the target. So that's probably a little bit helpful as well. Um, they also changed all the uh, drop rates of most of the um, consumables like traps, cozies, launch pads, mountain turrets. For traps, cozies, and uh, launch pads, they actually increase their drop rate pretty slightly. And for mounted turret, they decrease the drop rate. So I'm kind of happy about all that as well. And one thing I don't like is that the small shield's max stack size has been decreased from 10 
to six. So that I really do not like. Um, I kind of liked having small shields, uh, having a ton of them. I think that um, I don't really like that. I, it's kind of annoying in my opinion. And then they also fixed um, some pretty basic bugs, which um, all of these seemed, you know, kind of nice. And gameplay wise, they also added a few other things. Um, moving on to that, uh, one thing they improved was zipline improvements. Uh, this was kind of big because ziplines were very, very glitchy, and I think uh, that kind of helped a lot. So added the ability to change direction via player movement input button, just moving the direction you'd like while going on a zipline, no jumping required, so that's very helpful. Um, rather than moving at max speed as soon as you enter the zipline, players will accelerate over time to reach that max speed. I think that's good as well. And destruction effects have been turned back on while riding a zipline. So um, players will destroy the nearby player building before attaching the zipline so the path becomes Becomes more clear and I think all those help zip lines zip lines were very very glitchy there's a lot of people just kind of randomly falling off and cutting themselves or um, trying to turn around and jumping off and glitching to the ground so I think that helps a lot another thing I did add a third decimal place for mouse slash controller sensitivity to allow for more granule values I think that will help it that's gonna be nothing too crazy probably if you're using a mouse it might help a little bit more um, I have my sensitivity pretty high on a controller so I don't think that's gonna be a huge difference for controllers but um, to help situations where walls are built mostly underground, we've added added function functionality where an extra piece will be built for free on top of that piece. So people were kind of somewhat glitching out again, where they would try to place a wall kind of low to the ground where the law, where the ground wasn't even, and that wall would just simply appear either like above it or below in the ground, and you couldn't really see it or use it very much. So you'd be spending 20 wood basically on one wall, and they pretty much just fixed that. So I think that's kind of just a basic thing. People probably didn't notice too much. Um, they changed the gamepad sensitivity. Building sensitivity change also applies to edit mode. So that's probably another just small thing that's helpful as well. Um, editing will no longer interrupt gunfire and pickaxe, pickaxe swings. So that is very nice. I, I kind of hated that, especially on um, using a controller because it is very, very annoying not having that. Um, corn stalks will no longer block gunfire. That's just something small. I never went in corn stalks anyways. Um, editing structure will now begin with... Uh, without waiting for a response time from the server. So I think this is actually really big because sometimes when you are in either a, like a build battle uh, or one way or another and someone would like outplay you by editing it and a lot of times it was because they just had a better ping than you. So they're doing this to cut down on ghost shots before editing and make it a smoother experience. So basically, if someone had a really high ping and you both shot at the same, or excuse me, a really low ping, and you both shot at the same time, but your ping was higher and they did like an edit play on you, that can kind of really hurt a lot. And it, it's still kind of, I don't really know how they're doing this too much, but it seems like this will probably help that. I know I've been in these situations, especially playing on console without uh, you know, a super great ping. I know I've been in situations with that. Um, vehicle impact damage to a player will now respect shields instead of directly applying to player health. So when you're like falling off an ATK or a plane or something like that, uh, it would actually hit your shield as well as your health if it gets enough damage. So I think that's another one that just kind of makes sense to me as well. Um, when a plane explodes due to any reason, it will now deal damage to both passengers and pilots. This damage is no longer nor shield. So once again, kind of nerfing uh, vehicles and especially nerfing planes a little bit more. Uh, infinite dab is an even more infinite dab for 11 hours instead of 10 hours in the lobby. I love that one. Uh, adjusted map art to more accurately represent player and marker positions. Um, another one that I think is kind of helpful as well because sometimes the markers are a little bit off. Textures of props used in emotes now pre-steamed, so scorecard and other emotes that use props will have less chance of using a low-resolution texture. Just a little bit of editing there. And X4 Stormwind passengers now have the same hold-to-exit functionality as pilots, so I feel like sometimes when you're jumping out of planes, um, they just kind of uh, fix that as well. And over, other than that, uh, there's just some basic uh, just bug fixes and stuff of that nature. Most of the bug fixes were ones you know you might or may or may or not have been aware of. And uh, some of them were kind of funny, like they fixed the glider and umbrella, no longer appearing sideways or missing line when dropping from the battle bus. Um, you know, the kind of like plane damage, a lot of zipline stuff, some boombox stuff. Uh, nothing too crazy there. But other than that, guys, there's really it for this video. Let me know if you guys like these patch notes. I can't wait to use more of the um, scoped revolver. I think that gun's actually going to be pretty good. And it'll be interesting to see how people like the glider redeploy item. I don't really know if it's worth an item slot. 
But other than that, guys, thanks for watching. Like I said before, if you're new to the channel, definitely consider subscribing. I talk about gaming content, um, Red Dead Redemption 2, Fortnite, uh, kind of all the good and new up-to-date games. But other than that, guys, thanks for watching.